What's up, guys? Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, the race at Texas this weekend. Uh, I initially didn't plan on talking about it, but I've seen some other people talking about it and stuff, and, and I, I do have my own opinions on it, so I figured why not. Uh, of course, the, the main story this season is the Arrow Package. And every week we're tuning in and we're like wondering how this thing's going to play out. And I'm not at a point where I've given up on it. Or, I mean, I was never a proponent for it. So I don't, I don't have a choice. As a fan, NASCAR made a decision. It is what it is. So I'm trying my best to just let it play out and give it a chance, and try to find positives, um, but, you know, I gotta be honest, I think that after, a f I know it's only been a few races, but we've seen three mile and a half tracks, and we've seen a two mile track at an auto club, these are the tracks where this aero package was really supposed to, that's what it's designed for, you know, the short tracks, they're pretty much what you expect um uh, they always especially martinsville you know you're gonna get a good race it's just the nature of of those tracks create great racing um i know a lot of people don't like mile and a half tracks i like mile and a half tracks um i don't have a problem with them i i like that there's a, a you know diversity with all these different tracks throughout the the season I don't want to just see short tracks. I don't want to just see road courses or mile and a half. You know, it's good that it's blended and stuff. Uh, you know, a change to the schedule definitely sounds like a great idea. I've talked about that. Um, but I am, I do like mile and a half tracks. I know I'm probably in the minority. Um, these are just my opinions, so, you know, hopefully you guys take it for what it is, and let me know what your opinions are. Um, like I said, we've seen three mile and a half, and, and a two mile, so far. I think that's enough to gauge, more or less, what this package is, and what it's not. You know, do we really need to see you know, another 10 races, like, uh, what are we going to see that we haven't seen? I'm not sure there's something there. I think what we've seen, that's what it is. That's what you got. Um, and there, it's a mixed bag, in my opinion. The Texas race, I didn't hate it. I don't think it was a bad race. It had its moments. Overall, I, I'm, I was okay with it, but I'm certainly not as up on it as other people. I do notice other people that really think it was a great race, and that's fine. You know, uh, I just, maybe I'm missing what other people are seeing. Uh, you know, different people are going to like different things about these races or want to see different things. I'm not a fan of wide open throttle racing. I just, for me, it doesn't feel right, especially at a mile and a half track that you can run wide open all day long. Uh, there was no tire wear. And let's talk about the things that this aero package was meant to do. It was meant to create a lot more passing and especially up front for the lead but what we've seen so far in my estimation I don't see that much m more passing than we used to see before for me it's almost the same I don't really see a big noticeable difference now if you sit here you can sit there and, and, and analyze each race lap by lap and count exactly how many passes and maybe somebody will say to me well there was X amount more passing here than there was last year at the same track with a diff with the old package. Okay, I'm not going to argue that. But just sitting there as, as a spectator watching the race, honestly, it felt the same in terms of 
number of passes, right? As for passing up front, especially for the lead, again, I must be missing something. I see guys that get out front and they're extremely difficult to pass. Clean air is still an issue. These guys are extremely hard to pass. We saw Jimmy Johnson lead the whole first stage. Um, you see cars that when they're up front, they can hold the lead. But if through bad pit strategy or an issue, whatever the case is, and they have to restart further back, most of these guys could not get back to the front. There are a few cars that were fast and were able to, to fight their way back. But for the most part, it's all about clean air. It's all about track position. The same shit that we've been hearing people complain about for the past couple years. About how awful this type of racing is. So, what is the difference between the race we saw yesterday and what we've seen in the past? In terms of overall passing, for me it was pretty much even. Up front, for me, it it felt worse. I, it, these cars are so hard to pass. And you've seen guys in second place or third fight their way right to the leader, but they can pull up to them, but they can't pass. They It's like they hit a wall. The same type of thing that we see in restricted plate racing at, at uh, pack and pack racing, um, you see these cars that are clearly maybe quicker than the leader, but once they get right behind them, game over, and they can't pass. The passes we did see for the lead, it had to do with lap traffic. Somebody just you know at the just just uh, pulled up at the right time and used the lap traffic as a pick. There was one moment, I think, where uh, Suarez was leading. And I don't remember who it was who was a lap car. And he did, he wasn't, I don't think he was high or low. He was like kind of in the middle. And it kind of ruined, uh, you know, kind of he kind of blocked Suarez. It's just a racing deal. No, no sinister thing there, right? It's just racing. These things happen. But the point is that he got caught at the wrong time. And I think he got passed. I don't know if it was Kyle Busch at the time. I think it was. But the point is that that's the only time you really were able to see the, these passes. Um, in the you know, once you got past the first five or six cars, you did see more passing and stuff. But again, not that different from the old package. Um, the biggest difference I've noticed. Is that, yeah, the cars are kind of bunched up more. They don't, like the leader doesn't get to blow the field away or, or really pull away. So it kind of, like a yo-yo effect, it kind of keeps them from getting, you know, so far ahead. But it doesn't change the feel of the race. You know, you when you look on at the lap times and you see how far apart each guy is from the next guy, yeah, they're closer together. But the feel of the race isn't that different. And you see these guys wide open throttle, lap after lap after lap, no tire wear, and they, a lot of these guys just were fighting. And then when they got side by side with another car, they kind of stall each other. It was extremely difficult passing when you were side by side in traffic or even just throughout the field. So the one thing I noticed that was definitely all this package is when you had these guys side by side just fighting each other. Those cars together side by side would punch such a huge hole in the air that whoever was behind them pulled right up to them. And I, I mean, it was really fast. The, the closing rate was insane, which is what you expect in, in restricted plate racing. So that, you, you would see the guy pull up, but then once he got there, 
if there was nowhere for him to go, he had to let off. Again, that was probably the biggest difference I noticed, and that's not exciting to me. I'm not a fan of this manip. It just feels manipulated. Like it's all because of this engineered aspect of these cars and this racing that created that type of thing. And it happened a lot throughout the day. That, that's not exciting to me. It just feels manipulated. And I really f walked away from this race. I, I didn't hate it. I, I actually, there were moments I liked. It wasn't a bad race, but it wasn't great either. For me, it was middle of the road. Um, and for me, when you look at what this aero pa package is supposed to do and what it actually does, I don't get it. What am I missing? The leader is still extremely difficult to pass and it at moments feels like it's harder to pass than it was before. Like the problem got worse. Um, the cars are closer together from you know from from first place to last. The passing throughout the field feels the same. Um, and these cars, they get side by side, they stall each other out. I don't see what this aero package is actually doing where it's actually meeting the expectations of what NASCAR intended. I'm glad that it's not fucking Daytona, like just complete pack of cars just stuck together that's a good thing but w for me the package so far is a failure and I'm not it this isn't like my final verdict y yes it's only been a few races but man we've seen three mile and a half races we've seen uh, auto club um, and the best race of, of those type tracks right Martinsville was great, of course, but of these style of tracks was Atlanta. And Atlanta was not like this because there was tire wear. The cars were squirrely. They weren't able to run lap after lap after lap, wide open throttle. They, they couldn't do it. And that's what made that race so much better, in my opinion. Some people are actually saying this was the best uh, mile and a half race we've had this year. It's just an opinion. I don't feel that way. I thought Atlanta is is head and shoulders better than than, than what we saw here. The tires was it, that was amazing. These guys had didn't have to change tires. They went on a full fuel run. I'm not talking about. Like they, they ran 10 laps and then a caution came out and they just didn't change tires. I'm talking about these guys were going almost a, a, a full fuel run and then just come in and just just uh, whatever, take take fuel and keep going. And, and the lap times didn't really drop that much. So tire wear played no part in this race. Guys running wide open. And then what can you possibly do? If you get stalled out, you're already wide open. So you're taking tools away from these drivers. I don't get it. For me, the intent of this aero package is is not it's not really happening. So then it, it just leads me to wonder how long are they gonna stick with this thing? Obviously, they're probably gonna just do this for the whole year. But I really hope, I mean, I don't know, man. If people really, maybe I'm in the minority, and maybe most of you guys really loved it. And if so, I got no problem saying it is what it is, whether I like it or not. If you guys enjoy it, and, and the majority of people enjoy it, that's all that matters. Because it's not about one guy or what they think. This is just an opinion. But if you guys enjoyed it, please tell me. And let me know why you thought it was such a great race. Let me know. Do you really like seeing this wide open throttle around the track? And then, and, and do, Or did you actually notice a lot more passing? I missed it. And I was paying attention. It just, just sitting there watching the race. 
as an average uh, viewer, I didn't see a big difference in terms of number of passes. The, the leader just felt like whoever got out front, it was almost impossible to pass unless, like I said, they ran into some uh, lap traffic. I think maybe once or twice throughout the day where it was a legitimate, just the guy in second, just overtaking the first, the, the leader and passing him by themselves. And even when that happened, I think there was a couple times where the guy had two tires or, or whatever. So, yeah, there was no tire wear, but I guess after 10 laps, a guy with fresh tires and a guy who didn't change tires, that's the only time you kind of saw that come into play. But that's what I saw. Again, don't take it the wrong way. I didn't hate the race. I thought it was okay. I just didn't, you know, I didn't really feel one way or the other in terms of enjoyment. For the most part, I, it, it, it was a watchable race. The first half of the race, I mean, let's be honest, you know, you had Jimmy Johnson for the first stage and then I forgot who else, but it wasn't, you know, the leader just got out front and, and, no, and couldn't be passed. So, just from these few races, I think, I don't, you know, I'll be shocked if we go to another mile and a half and then we see a, complete, a drastically different race. I just don't see, how is that going to happen? We've had three mile and a halfs and we've had uh, Auto Club. So, how much more do you need to see before you, you, you feel like, okay, I know what this package is. This is it, what we're watching. So, I don't know. At the end of the day, I, I, I don't, I haven't seen anything that that's made me change my mind. I still think that these cars are over-engineered. There's too much aero dependency on them. Uh, I prefer stock car racing, where it's about mechanical grip, tire wear, uh, adjustments, and the driver wheeling the car and not being able to. And having to play with the throttle and and be and just be careful, always on that edge. That's classic NASCAR to me. Now I realize that, you know, I think I was never that hung up on on how awful the NASCAR racing was. I didn't. I'm not saying it was great, but I was for the most part okay with it. Um, it could use a tweak here and there, but what I'm seeing now for me is a downgrade. It's not an upgrade. This isn't Formula One. You know, stock cars are supposed to be big, heavy, overpowered, hard to handle. When I, when I think of NASCAR, when I think of classic NASCAR, that's what I'm thinking. It's not supposed to be Formula One which is basically airplanes on wheels. These cars are over-engineered. And I really think that raising the ride height just an inch or two, let some air get underneath the car and upset the car a little bit so the car's not sucked down to the ground, there's too much downforce. You won't be able to run wide open. Drop that spoiler, that rear spoiler, back to more, more or less what it was last year. And, and add a, a little bit of horsepower. Don't You, you don't got to go crazy. But I think another seven, 50 to 75 horsepower and, and dropping that spoiler and raising the right height just a little bit, that would make a huge difference. I would love to just see that as an experiment. Just try it for the hell of it. I mean, they already, they've already shown a willingness to make changes. You know, NASCAR's not shy about it. So try it. Just see what happens at a mile and a half track. This wide open throttle, I don't get it, man. And again, don't take it the wrong way. I'm not bashing NASCAR. I'm not bashing the race at Texas. It was okay. But I want to know what I'm missing. What didn't I see that everyone else is seeing about how great this race is? I thought it was, meh. You know, 
it, it wasn't really that different in many aspects. And in other aspects where it was different, I didn't like what I saw. These cars stalling when they're next to each other. Just manipulated. Ugh, I just, I don't get it, man. It should be all about mechanical grip, tire wear, adjustments, driver skill. I'm not saying it doesn't take skill to drive these cars, but you saw other guys in the mix that you're not used to seeing. Now, that's a po in one way, okay, I, I like seeing that, but isn't that what we see at Daytona and Talladega? You see names that you normally not used to seeing up front or in the mix because of the aero package. It just makes, I don't know, man. On a positive note, I did, you know, I, I still don't have a driver that I'm like, okay, that's my guy. But uh, it was nice seeing Daniel Suarez running up front, running fast all day. That was cool to watch. He's been running well this year. So, you know, I still don't have a lock on who who's going to be my guy. That's just something that's just going to come to me naturally. And, and who knows? I might go in a whole year and not really have a, you know, who's that guy I'm going to go out and buy the merchandise and the t-shirts and all that stuff and, and really have that rooting interest. Uh, I have no idea, but, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a bad race. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't for me. I don't see what all this other stuff, this great racing, I don't get it. So I, I'm curious to know your uh, thoughts. What do you think about what I said? Um, I look forward to your comments.